hey guys welcome to seascape hope you guys doing well and good so this is the second part of ice navigation in this we are going to ask some questions to our captain and to pilot and this russian pilot is having an ice uh, navigation experience of 10 years and more so i hope you guys gonna enjoy it if you have not seen the first part of ice navigation i'll put the link up in the description if you like it do share subscribe and comment if you have some relevant queries do ask me on instagram so here we go good morning mr pilot morning. so we have two questions so what are the special challenges you face piloting in ice Mostly that is an experience. Every pilot before coming, a real pilot, he has to train. And his senior colleagues, they became a teachers. And uh, pilot itself, ship handling. And also working in ice is not a scientific thing. It is just a job. It is just an experience. There is no training centers, no computer can uh, correctly make, uh, make correct image of behavior of the ship, especially in the ice, because ice is different. Uh, uh, behavior of the ship in the ice depends upon the thickness of the ice, the temperature of the ice, because the ice in the low temperatures is absolutely different from the ice which started melting. So it is mostly experience. You cannot study it in any college, in any academy. So you uh, received any specific uh, training from port regarding handling vessel in ice condition? Uh, there is no possibility to make a mathematic model of ice. There are a lot of uh, training centers, uh, computerized or models like Ilava, like Grenoble, like Southampton. Certainly, the model behavior is much more real and corresponds to real ship. Computer modeling, still, in, even in our days, cannot get a real image of ship's behavior. It is impossible to make special training except training and in practice. So I have to thank my senior colleagues with gave me a lot of knowledge and practical examples. Okay. What is I the so. maximum amount of ice thickness you have found in St. Petersburg? About one meter. About one meter. I mean the single layer, but the single layer is outside. Here in a channel or in a port, the ships are constantly moving. They are breaking the ice constantly and the ice is mostly multi-layer. So yes. I cannot really imagine how thick is the ice in a port because it is smashed and it is always multi-layer but in the gulf the most thick ice we have met it was 10 years ago in 2010-2011 it was up to one meter thickness okay thank you for your ask thank you good afternoon captain good afternoon Pradeep. So Captain, we have some questions regarding to ice navigation and we expect you will answer them all. We received through some of the Instagram accounts. I will try. Okay, so here we go. So the first question is, how was ice chart helpful? And on a scale of 0 to 9, how would you tell us the accuracy of it? We get ice charts from the Finnish uh, uh, Belt Ice Organization and they are very helpful and very detailed and they are very good at predicting uh, where we will meet uh, the ice so i would say on a scale from eight to nine they are definitely on an eight okay we got our answer we move on to next one so what will be the additional precaution on account of stability of the vessel um, we do uh, have in our uh, ballast water tanks to prevent the ballast water from freezing into ice 
we do have some air bubble system. Okay. And uh, that sends out uh, air to prevent, uh, otherwise we will have big ice cubes in the ballast water tanks. And we are also using our anti-healing system uh, more frequently in ports. Okay, yeah. understood, thank you. We move on to the next one. What was your special challenge in uh, navigating through ice? You have to be more uh, careful with everything and you have to uh, post a lookout earlier. Uh, we have big ice projectors forward in a foremast that we uh, uh, engage so that we can encounter the ice. You have to be uh, adjust your radar all the time so that you are able to see the ice. And uh, you have to uh, calculate for low speed when you uh, reach the ice. Uh, our speed will go down uh, maybe two, three, four, five knots, maybe even more. So you have to uh, take precautions for everything. Understood. Anything specific for the main engine? Uh, we have the main engine on maneuver uh, all the time when we know that we can expect the ice. So that from the bridge we can do anything. We don't have to have manned engine room, but as long as the duty officer uh, can do anything with the uh, engine telegraph. Okay, understood. We move on to next one. So the next question is: Do we require icebreaker every time while navigating through ice waters? So far we have not uh, had the uh, need for assistance from any icebreakers. Uh, we can manage uh, the ice to some degree ourselves. We can break through uh, some centimeters ourselves. So, so far it has not been necessary, fortunately. Okay, understood. So, uh, next question, Captain. Tips while planning passage in uh, ice areas. You have to make your passage plan with the precautions, some of them as I mentioned uh, earlier, but you have to have a plan B and be prepared that the VTS that is monitoring from shore might direct us outside channels, outside voyage. So of course we must have our no-go areas um, defined so that we don't go to shallow waters but uh, the vo you need to have a voice plan yes but you must be prepared for a little bit of everything okay and it's a little bit of everything so the next question is it safe to navigate at night if the leads lanes are not visible at night if yes then why well it is safe yes because we do it uh, but of course it requires that you take a lot of uh, uh, f position fixes, a lot of LOPs, uh, more than usual, so that you constantly know exactly where you are. Uh, and of course monitor the water depths all the time. Okay, that's well understood. Uh, so next question, Captain. One pro and one con about ice navigation. One con is that, uh, yeah, you need to, uh, you might lose so much speed that you actually stop. And it's difficult to calculate when that happens. You cannot see when it happens. But on the other hand, one pro is that when you stop, you're not moving, you're not drifting. So, for instance, when taking on board the pilot, the vessel is totally stopped like if you were sailing in a piece of butter you are stopped okay and so we will end this uh, by our final question how was your uh, overall experience as a captain and navigating through ice in uh, the peak winter season uh, so far i have found it uh, very exciting and interesting in fact of course a little bit challenging but it's something out of the ordinary for us navigators so, um, in fact, I like it and that's also what I feel from my uh, colleague navigators on the bridge, that it's uh, quite exciting. Okay, thank you, Captain. So, we will end this and thank you for giving us your time and answering to all the questions. You're welcome. Anytime. Thank you.